Hi there, welcome to FMCG by Alex. Today, I would like to talk to you about modeling for growth and identifying the sources for growth. So let's go over the growth sources. First of all, we have new brands and new product launches. The second is increased distribution. And the third is increased promotion. There's not an FMCG company in the world that can claim to be successful unless it is launching new brands or new products or increasing its distribution. So strong distribution is also one of the things that needs to be done. Promotion is basically a function of that. So for new brands and new products, you need to identify the growth category. So basically which category has potential to grow. This is based on use cases. So you map the market. So you look at where actually uh, this categories, uh, this is data you can get from both uh, desk research and also from the retailers that you deal with. So comparing the competitors, so where is the growth, which categories are growing, looking at what the competitors are doing, obviously, but you're looking also at use cases and frequency. For example, um, yeah, you would basically have uh, smaller packaging if it is like, say, single use. Uh, people can use it on the, on the fly, on the road, basically. Uh, frequency, meaning that frequency will increase, therefore the consumption will increase. So in any way you can innovate in that ca case. Then, of course, differentiation. So you have different flavors, different packaging. Uh, you know, it can also be a differentiation in terms of um, the use case of gifting, for example. So um, currently, maybe the product category is not something that you do for gifting, but it could, for example, be innovated that way by you know adding gift packaging or insinuating with promotion that it's something you could put in a gift so it's a very good example is one of the things that they do in the netherlands at this moment there is a chocolate milk brand called chocomel normally chocomel is actually just a chocolate milk the chocolate milk in the netherlands but uh, basically they what they're doing at this moment is because it's customary to uh yeah, put chocolate letters or letters with your first name basically in as a gift for kids uh, during this time. It's a festive period. They will basically say, okay, we put the letters on the uh, packs of chocolate milk. And you can also put the chocolate milk letters in the shoe, yeah, in the shoe of the kids. Uh, this is normally like kids sing a song. They get uh, something in the morning. They get a, uh, a gift from... Uh, yeah, that's a version of Santa Claus that we have here uh, that uh, uh, does that basically. So you put this actually, the chocolate milk you put in uh, as a gift instead of the chocolate letter. So this is a way of saying, okay, this is also a way to uh, increase the consumption because maybe uh, more people will choose that. Then you have regional preferences, so the brands can actually uh, have strengths in regions, uh, certain regions or weaknesses in certain regions. Uh, product and flavor uh, preferences can also differ. So some flavors are maybe very popular in certain areas and not so popular in others. Um, then you have basically the so-called win in many markets strategy. So basically this comes down to you design products that fit into every category. So you have uh, in essence uh, from the entire use cases that you have mapped out, for every single user, there is a uh, specific SKU that you are designing. So let's say there's a small one for on the on the on the road. There is a, a large package for uh, you know family use. Um, all these things are you know winning many markets, uh, winning many categories basically. And then you need to constantly keep innovating in terms of formulation. So. Uh, the latest thing, uh, you know, anything that is maybe not um, uh, used anymore or new things that needs to be used, uh, uh, sugar uh, uh, replacements, for example, uh, packaging, uh, different types of packaging, plastic packaging is out of the question now. So you have to have uh, biodegradable packaging, for example, but even distribution and advertising, you can innovate, eh? like in essence, like what is the message you are conveying to your customers, etc. And how do you get the product there? So there's basically, uh, you know, no way of saying, how do you, for example, could you dispense uh, juice in a supermarket? Eh? There are juice uh, dispensers actually that you can get your fresh orange juice in the supermarket. So that's another way of distribution uh, for a specific brand. Then increased distribution, that basically comes down to new channels or new areas. So new channels would be, 
okay, I'm currently in supermarkets, but uh, should I also be in traditional stores? Eh? If you're in a market with traditional stores, should I be in Horeca? Should I be in, in various other channels? Should I go into e-commerce channels if I'm not there yet? Then new areas would be new geographic areas. So let's say I'm only selling into one province of the uh, country. Could Should I actually expand to other cities, other provinces? Um, should it go to rural areas, for example, rather than uh, uh, you know, urban areas, basically? So you uh, look at numerical versus weighted distribution. So increased distribution, meaning like, okay, not necessarily more stores maybe, but maybe you're also improving your weighted distribution, meaning you sell more to the same store. And then uh, this is also one of the things that a lot of companies are currently doing is uh, if your product is suitable for it, it's direct to consumer distribution where you bypass the retail channel um, and you actually do it directly to consumer where there might be some sort of delivery service or, you know, they have this with razor blades, even uh, you know, razors uh, where you can actually get a top up of uh, yeah, razor blades uh, whenever you are running out or even coffee uh, that is delivered to your house uh, directly uh, ice cream i've seen in more warm countries because also there's better to cut out the middleman and deliver it directly because it's melting otherwise uh, difficult to keep the temperature uh, and therefore also the quality consistent so all these direct to consumer distribution things it has to be uh, something that margin wise makes sense so more for premium products than uh, for you know the mass market products but i mean then it's a volume game rather than a price game if you're not selling that much advertise, that is basically the old uh, saying. So increase promotion. So adjusting the positioning is one of the things that uh, you know you need to look at from time to time. Sometimes the messages can get outdated, yeah? like things that maybe are tiring for consumers or maybe not really politically correct anymore in this day and age. You know, like something that is maybe working ten or twenty years ago that might need a refresher uh, these days. Then you have, of course, uh, ATL marketing, which is, uh, you know, uh, increasing the advertising on television. Um, yeah, also uh, these days our online advertising is also part of ATL marketing and eh? top of funnel marketing, meaning it's more for the brand, for the brand marketing. And you have BTL marketing, which is more direct at the retail level or direct with uh, a call to action, basically, which can also be online, obviously, and connecting those things. So if you say like uh, above the line and below the line marketing, you have through the line marketing where you connect the two uh, in essence. And the thing is that uh, these days also you need uh, uh, influencers are tied together, for example, where it comes down to it's part of ATL marketing. It can also be part of BTL marketing. If you connect to the say influencers, go to the stores, for example. And then, you know, one of the strategies com uh, applied by uh, a lot of the uh, consumer goods companies, basically, or fast moving consumer goods companies is that, you know, to capture the share of voice, meaning you're outspending your competitor. Um, you know, larger companies can lean on the smaller ones because they have a bigger budget for advertising. Therefore, you know, you capture more of the share of voice, meaning like your advertisement maybe airs 10 times while the uh, competitor only airs one time. Now, then you have a, a much larger share of voice uh, in the channel. So that's also used to sometimes, you know, uh, obliterate comp competition or, you know, uh, obscure the competition in this case. So this is one of the things that, uh, uh, yeah, larger companies do. Um, so increased promotion, like I said, it's it's something that it's elusive. They always said that like, marketing managers say, joke, say, uh, yeah, jokingly say 50% uh, of what I do is throwing money out of the window. I just don't know which 50%. So yeah, that is actually something that nowadays with a lot of performance marketing and I would also say, you know, uh, choices that you make, it's, it's something that it, it always, um, you know, uh, comes down to the positioning of your product. So if the message is connected to your positioning uh, properly and it resonates with people, where well, you really take a position that is unique in the market and really caters to these, you know, for who is this and what does it do for you? Well, that's the basics. And, you know, what does it do for you can be a functional benefit. So meaning the actual thing, let's say a deodorant makes you uh, smell fresh, but it can also have a premium uh, 
emotional benefit where it says, oh, uh, because uh, I'm uh, one of the higher income people, I'm a successful person, therefore I smell better than everybody else because this deodorant is actually very premium. So that's one of the examples. Eh? It can be uh, with coffee as well. I just don't drink just uh, that that uh, coffee that is uh, not... Uh, uh, you know, it's more for the working class. I am actually a white collar worker. I, uh, uh, you know, I need premium coffee. I, I drink uh, a specific brand because that is also the positioning I'm, I'm after basically for myself. Eh? I'm actually identifying emotionally with that brand on that level. So this is one of the things that, that really, you know, defines like, okay, if you spend a lot of money on marketing and advertising, yeah, you better make sure that the basics are right. So if you spend a lot of marketing money uh, on the wrong message or uh, product is not positioned correctly uh, to capture the largest share of audience, and this is very dynamic. So there are a lot of brands that actually shift. Uh, there's a lot of brands that are obliterated over the years by the competition or new entrants, new entrants who just do it a little bit better or are just a little bit more focused on specific consumer segments that have been underserved in the in the previous uh, by the previous brands so that can really lead to yeah paradigm shifts in that sense and normally you know a lot of fmcg companies will fight like for that one percent market share up or down they will fight like like you know uh, the world war three basically but uh, you see sometimes these shifts are coming because of all these innovations that are happening and yeah, failing to keep up with the sign of the time. So increased promotion definitely is one of the uh, tools. It depends a little bit on your budget, obviously, um, but it has to work in tandem with new products, increased distribution, and therefore increased promotion is the icing on the cake. Thank you for watching. Please don't forget to like and subscribe if you like the video, if it's helpful for you, I hope so. If you want to send me an email, alex at the free sales consultancy.com. I hope to see you in the next video. Thank you so much for watching.